we're going to play a game shortly about getting creative. So the other day, Pastor Paul, you're going to appreciate this, we were in staff meeting and we were talking about the why, the who, the what and the how of our ministry. Looking at why do we do the things we do, um, what's the purpose of it? And when we look at Jesus, he only ever did the things his father told him to do. So Jesus knew the will of the father and set about doing these things. And he's actually asked us to do the same as well. So the first question I have is, why? When I'm Paul. So why do we share the good news of Jesus to others? Or the good stories about God, what God has done? For me, it actually starts back in Deuteronomy chapter 6. It says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down when you, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. So here it's just speaking about how to, talking about the Lord wherever and whenever. There seems to be no place where you shouldn't speak or can't speak about the Lord. It's not just here on a Sunday or in our life group. And again in Matthew 28, we have the Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end, very end of, of the age. Now, Jesus commands us, firstly, was to talk about Jesus, talk about the Lord's commands wherever we go, and then in the New Testament, we've got Jesus commands us to go make disciples of all nations. It's not complicated. Well, not in my head anyway. So we have the why, we have the Old Testament command of taking, talking about the Lord, and we have the new commandment, commandment of Jesus' last command of going, making disciples. So the next one is Paul. Who? <laughs> no, I challenged him on that one. <laughs> so this part has two parts to it. First, who's receiving it? Any guesses? Yeah, that's right, well done. So the Great Commission says to go and make disciples of all nations, not just here in Brisbane, not here, just here in Australia, but all nations. And we have, you know, our amazing, amazing missions teams out, um, with the, well, Max are back now, but uh, Abby in Ecuador, etc., doing amazing jobs. But it also includes our young people as well. Our mission field is also in the high schools, it's in the primary schools, in our local community. They are a part of the all nations. And I get the privilege of being part of that, of being able to go make disciples of all nations. Second part, the second part is who shall go and make disciples of all nations? Again, well done, Beth. <laughs> We're all called to go share the good news of Jesus. So throughout scripture, we often read how God chooses the most unlikely people to do his work. He chooses a shepherd boy to be king. He uses a young Jewish girl to become queen to save the Jews. He uses fishermen to be disciples. He uses a murderer to be, you know, to write two-thirds of the New Testament, I think it is. See, God can use anybody. He uses the ordinary people like us and he can use the ordinary objects in our lives to re reveal Jesus to others. But we can all use excuses in the world why we can't do it. Like Moses, Moses tried but didn't quite work. Exodus 4.10 says, Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant. Lord, I've never been eloquent neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. He tried. The beauty of God is that he uses our weaknesses for his glory because it's not about us, it's about him. If we can be obedient and willing, God promises the Holy Spirit that he will be there to guide us and to teach us. He will give us the words. So when we make it about ourselves, we'll worry what we will say. But when we make it about God, the Holy Spirit will actually give us the words to say. So the next part was the what and how. To identify the what. Often we look for the big and exciting moments or think if I just have or I just need in order to share Jesus with others. But how many times does God speak to us in the ordinary or even use the ordinary things in our lives to get our attention? I know sometimes we all want the loud, audible voice but when we keep, look, keep looking for that, we often miss what's in front of us. We miss the quiet whisper of God. Now, Sonia, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Only because we, 
You know what I'm doing. Sonia, can you? Okay. Okay. So, Sonia, I want you to choose an ordinary object up here, and you can choose from the fire extinguisher and the garbage bin and the plant. They're part of it. And I just want you to quickly share something about Jesus using this object. So you can choose whatever you want. <laughs> Sometimes we walk around with rubbish from the enemy that will shut us down, will silence us, will put us in a cage with an open door and we need to bin it. And if it's what, we, what I was listening to this morning about forgiving ourselves, we can't forgive ourselves. We accept God's forgiveness and then we can forgive others. So the bin is where we put it. Amen. <laughs> it was just a bin, wasn't it? Just an ordinary bin, clean. But the difference was Sonia looked for Jesus in that bin. She looked at what to say because she knew she had Jesus. She knew what she had to say. It wasn't like she was like, oh, it's a bin, but she was looking for Jesus in that and was able to speak from that point. Um, so sometimes we might, you know, think we've got nothing to say, but when we actually look for Jesus in the midst of our objects in our hands, we will find it, something to talk about. So we're actually going to be doing this activity in groups now. Um, I've got some interesting toys up here. I have a puzzle. The right code. <laughs> a dog toy. A, a kid's toy. The kettle. Soap. A good old ducky. I'm a ducky. A, a fire extinguisher, the bin, and a plant. So what I would like you guys... Oh, and a stapler. What I would like you guys to do now... Oh, sorry. So I put it up here, pride in place. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> so in, I want you in groups of say four or five, I want you to talk, I want you to grab an item, well not grab an item, but look at an item and I want you to share something about Jesus using that item. So you've just seen Sonia do it. She talked about Jesus bidding our, our sins from the garbage bin, the sins of the enemy into the garbage bin. So in your group, I want you to work through these, as many as you can, uh, these items and work out how you can share Jesus or something about what Jesus has done using these items. I'm just going to give you a few moments. So in groups of four or five, turn around. And then afterwards, we're going to share some of those with the church. How did we all go with that? Was it easy? Yes? Hands up if it was easy. It got easier. Got easier. Why was that, Sonia? Okay, so you, in other words, uh, what I can get from that is that you, all your attention was then focused on Jesus in that, in that object and you were able to draw stuff out. Okay. Instead of just seeing it as a fire extinguisher, you saw how Jesus could be that fire extinguisher. Okay, right, well, let's, do, let's go around and see what we've come up with, some, some creative answers. I know some might be very divisive. <laughs> There might be a few, I don't know, jealousy. Jealousy could be a good one out of that one, Paul. <laughs> oh, or pride. Or okay. pride. Okay. Okay. Uh, where, where should we start? Um, my son? Who had a good one for the flower pot? The flower pot the one I thought was actually a really good one, a really easy one. Kate. Okay. Brad? Kate has. So with the plant, obviously that is life. It is living and it is from God. It's a gift from God that we have, the creation around us. So again, to see that in others, to see life, to see... And when we feed and we nurture and we, we give it attention and love, it flourishes, same with each other. So that's what I saw. Awesome. Well 
There you go. Good. All right. Okay. Who had one for the garbage bin other than Sonia's? A different <laughs> perspective. Garbage bin, garbage bin. Okay, here goes. Who wants the bin? <laughs> Come on, there's some good ones in this one. <laughs> Just a minute. Come on. Where you been? Not been. <laughs> no, take us with bin. Take it out regularly. Take your trash out regularly. Because oh. what happens if you don't? It smells. Yep. Oh. <laughs> okay, the fire extinguisher. Come on. Okay, Peter. Hang on. Heaven and hell are real, and Jesus is the only way to get into heaven. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to need a fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, hang on. I think she... My ducky. Okay, Wendy. There we are. Okay, you know the song you sing with your grandkids in the bath? Five little ducks went out oh, one day. One. <laughs> I won't sing the whole song, but the end of it goes, all the little ducks had run away. So what happens? Mother duck, she went out one day over the hills and far away and brought all the ducks back. So God, Jesus is like that. He goes and seeks us, finds us and brings us that's back to him. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Some soap, hand soap. You want to do the hand soap? Lee! Um, we can wash our hands with soap all we like and it, it will get them clean, but we, only Jesus is going to be able to clean us on the inside. Amen. Awesome. Stay for. <laughs> Probably a little bit more obscure. Hey, oh. Hang on. The staple of rings order out of uh, sorry yeah order out of chaos unites us just like believers when we believe Ooh. in Jesus. Oh nice. Another stapler. Oh another stapler. <laughs> just as a stapler holds all the paper together, Colossians tells us in Him in Jesus all things are held together. Yeah. Oh. Look at you guys go. Football. Sharon. 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 Sean? No? You could, your group can do more than one, it's okay. Uh, it's just on the playground. It just builds community on the playground with the boys. They love kicking the ball to each other. And so I get down there and boot the ball to them as well. So, yeah. So it's about being community. Perfect. Uh, the dog toy. Do okay. <laughs> you want to do the dog toy? Yeah. Yeah. We've got Evan. Just don't don't hang on to anything like a dog hangs on to that. The the, toy, the bone's not any good. It doesn't no, not nutritious. But but just let it go. Don't just keep hanging on to it. Nice. Okay. Evan. It's the same. Oh, oh. perfect. Uh, the kids' toy. Hey, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. We are children of God. Oh, nice one, Zachy. Yeah. Jigsaw puzzle. Yep. Um, God can put put our pieces back together or find a missing piece. Oh, I like that one, yep. Oh, and, oh. Sometimes uh, the stories of Jesus that Jesus tells are a bit puzzling, but his Holy Spirit will reveal them to us. Perfect, yep. A puzzle is made up of many different pieces and we are all part of the puzzle. And when we come together, we form the big picture. But also there are people out there who don't know that they're part of the puzzle. And we need them. Okay, the chocolates and lollies. Okay. <laughs> Taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> the kettle. Oh, Chloe. Um, 
when your frustration grows, God helps you let out the steam. I just want to say, shout out to the youth back there. Well done. All right. Uh, so for the kettle, I saw the kettle as um, us. It represented us. And we're a vessel. And when we come to Jesus, it's like we have him living within us. And he talks about uh, w uh, living water flowing out from within. So when the kettle is poured, you know, the water can come out and uh, give people something to drink. But it can just be cold, right? So another aspect to it is the electricity that comes into the kettle to heat the water. And I saw the electricity as being like the Holy Spirit. So if you, you can have that living water, but without the power of the Holy Spirit coming in, it's just going to be cold water. So to be uh, fulfilling its full potential, it needs that power of the Holy Spirit as well. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> Brad? It was the same. Oh, OK. Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah, Dan had a good one for the shirt. Um, this might offend anyone who likes any sport, um, but I have a view that sport can be viewed as being something that people idolise way too much, and that represents, well, even if it was a, a Maroons jersey. Um, so, it, you know, when they go to stadiums and they all stand up and they all jump around and praise and they say, oh, I'm not religious, but then they're putting all their heart and soul into the sport that they idolise and they follow with a passion, they put all their money into it, they buy all the merch and it's, yeah, it, it can be really, really damaging to them where if they f put the same energy into God and the same energy into talking to people about what they did on the weekend and they went to church and they, they heard this amazing sermon rather than, oh, do you see that try? Like, so, <laughs> sorry everyone. Kim <laughs> at the back. <laughs> it's not a sport. One other one that came to mind for the jersey is a slightly different take is that as part of the Christian body, we are called to be part of God's team. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, God takes our filthy, ragged clothing and he washes it. <laughs> To make it perfectly maroon, oh uh, white. Sorry. Uh, just, just on the, uh, the the jersey and the the sport interested people here, uh, I really feel after the Broncos had a prayer meeting before the last game, Paul Butler would have to eat humble prayer, uh, humble pie. <laughs> okay, Paul. Do you have one to finish off with? Okay, Indy for Paul. <laughs> Um, so uh, the, the Blues uh, jersey this week represents a winner, but it also represents disappointment. Uh, and so when you put your trust in the things of this life and this world, you might get a few wins, but ultimately it's just a big disappointment. <laughs> Go the Blues. <laughs> oh. Well done. How, it wasn't so hard, was it? Oh, okay. And one more. Oh, no. What is yours? Okay. On oh, the table. Oh, I hadn't. Okay. She's thinking outside the box. I kind of had already said it, but just the table. I'm looking at the table and I just reflected back on the scripture we talked about. Um, the one thing I just thought is that um, not only does God provide everything for us, but the stick that you mentioned in the story of Moses, it was as he threw it on the ground, what God had put in his hand, he surrendered it. And I felt like um, that's a part of what we bring to the, We bring our stuff to the table and God trades us his provision for our stuff. Yeah. So this morning when you came in, you just saw objects. But by the end of this morning, you've seen Jesus in those objects. So we may not have a stick that turns into a snake to convince others of Jesus, but we still have the same God who is able to change and transform people. 
He's the same God who transformed our lives. Another example of this transformation is in Acts 3, verse 1 to 8. It says, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he put every day he was put every day to beg from, from those who were going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then, it, then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When the lame man saw Peter and John, he was expecting that they would give him some money, as was his, his custom to. But Peter and John had nothing physically to give him. But they knew they had something greater, the powerful name of Jesus Christ. It was in the name of Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit which brought this healing. So John and Peter knew the one greater than themselves, and they, they made it about Jesus, not them, not them. So we can use everyday objects from our own life to share with someone about God or what he's done in our lives and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work. Here is just a few other examples that we can think of from the Bible. We had Jehokabed, Jochebed, a bed, <laughs> Moses' mum. Um, she, she used straw to make a bed for Moses, a basket to protect him in the river. Miriam had a tambourine to celebrate. Which the, the, um, she was with people in celebration. David used a slingshot to kill a giant. Samson had a jawbone of a donkey to kill 1,000 men. Rahab had stalks of flax to hide spies. And Jesus used a lunch of a young boys to feed over 5,000 people. And the widow had just enough food for one last meal for, and God used it to feed her and her family and the prophet throughout the famine. So what's right in front of you today that you could use to tell someone about Jesus? It doesn't have to be grand or spectacular. You can use whatever you have. We don't have to look for the perfect opportunities, but we have to be willing and obedient and use what's in, in front of us or in our hands and allow God to do the rest for his glory. Sometimes most of us use what we can't do to keep us from doing what we can do. Or we don't use what we have. So what are the sticks in your hands today that, you, that God can use to tell people about Jesus? Maybe it's a kettle with around your friends that's going to bring people from darkness into light. And be willing to you and be willing and ready to use whatever you have and watch God do the rest. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you that, you know, we don't have to have the big and spectacular, but it's actually through your spirit that all the, that you bring things to, um, that you can use all things. Lord, today we want to offer ourselves as just a mere instruments of your of your work that you would use us um, to d this week, that you'd use our, our objects in our lives that we can share people about you. Um, so Lord, is, uh, help us not to be afraid, but be willing to be obedient um, in just sharing your good news, that your glory will be revealed, even through a blue, blues jersey. Father, there is always some way to praise you and bring you glory. So we just thank you in Jesus' name.